Alright, so listen, Game Freak hit us with a new Paradox Suicune. And it turns out that Walking Wake is extremely sick, so you already know I had to put this on a team and see how this bad boy functions. If you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, first of all, what are you doing? Second of all, go ahead and hit that button. It really helped me out. I'm well on my way to 300k, and I would much appreciate it. Now, without any further nonsense, let's get ourselves into the match here. So, my opponent is going to lead off with the Garchomp. That is not great, because I lead off with the Turtle, who does not enjoy ground. So, I basically just want to get the Drought up, uh, because Suicune, new Suicune has a couple things up his sleeve that enjoys that. So, now I'm thinking, if this is a lead Garchomp, it's more than likely just going to go right for the Stealth Rock turn 1, uh, rather than the Earthquake. However, I'm just going to switch right into the Alaskan Bullworm. If he does decide to go for that Earthquake, I eat that shit for breakfast. If not, it's fine. I get a free switch into the Earthworm, and Garchomp really does not want much to do against this. Uh, so he does, in fact, go for the Stealth Rock here, and now I kind of expect him to want to switch out. So that's going to allow me to go for the Shed Tail. To my surprise, somehow, I end up going first, which tells me that he's definitely going to go for a Dragon Tail here, which is a good play. Uh, so I go for, I go ahead and set up that decoy by chopping my own tail off like an absolute beast. And now it's time to bring in the actual beast. I go into the walking wake knowing that the dragon tail is coming. I figure that's fine. I basically just have my little bean bag to take that for me. And then I'm still positioned pretty well. Now I actually also I'm going to get the protosynthesis because of the sun. That's going to give me a special attack boost. And if you're on the other side of the field, you do not want to see that. What you also don't want to see is dragon tail actually missing there. So quite unfortunate on the dragon tail miss. Um, but that's actually great for me, because now I'm behind the substitute, I got my special attack boost, and there is nothing on the face of this earth that wants to deal with this walking wake right now. So, I decide to go for the Hydro Steam. The reason for that is because not only does the sun help us with our protosynthesis, but it actually helps out walking wake's new signature move. Essentially, if used under sun, we get 50% more damage, brings that to, I believe, a base power of 120, where ordinarily, water moves used under sun are going to get reduced by 50%. But our new Suicune here says, I don't give a heck. I'm a freaking T-Rex, or like a Raptor now, and that's fine. I go right for the Hydra Steam, and that does take care of the Garchomp. He did go for the Terra Fairy, which uh, would have been really unfortunate had I gone for the Dragon move, but the Steam is just too powerful anyway. And that thing is definitely not going to take that. So now, I'm actually positioned super well, especially being behind the Substitute. We've got a pretty solid base 109 speed on this thing, and it's, it's super scary Pokemon. So now, they decide to go into the Amoongus. Unfortunately... For our little mushroom friend, that is not an answer because I do actually have the coverage with Flamethrower. I've never seen a water type be able to take advantage of sun like my homeboy does here. So the Flamethrower is easily going to knock that thing out, boosted by the sun with the life orb. Then mushrooms are sautéed and ready for dinner. A little more fire roasted, a little, little extra char on that bad boy, but that's fine. So, now they're going to bring in the Greninja on the revenge switch in here. And this is a Pokemon that of course outspeeds me and should be able to break my substitute. Uh, but in the process, we're absolutely going to also have frogs for dinner as well. So, goes for the Dark Pulse here. Uh, I just click the Hydro Steam, obviously knowing that the Dark Pulse or something like that is coming. Going to change its type to Dark, and that does break my substitute. So, it is getting steamy up in this bitch, as down goes the Greninja. But this game is far from over. I can assure you, from the team preview, there is one Pokemon on this team that definitely destroys almost my entire squad. And now I've got to find a way around it as I'm exposed uh, not having my substitute. So in comes the bane of my existence, and that is going to be the Iron Valiant. This thing is extremely scary. It's going to come in looking about shiny chrome as hell like that Spongebob episode, and does go ahead and activate its quark drive. So with that, it's going to get a nice little speed boost, and anything this thing can hit me with essentially is going to knock me out. But the Walking Wake still has value, and I definitely want to make sure that that thing is safe. So what I decide to do here is go into the Orthworm. Now my plan is essentially just to switch into the Alaskan Bullworm, Big Hairy and Pink, and basically just uh, just sack this thing off so that I can get a free switch into something else. Um, and my main plan is, my main way of defeating this is actually going to be my Ledge. So, the only way that that can happen is if I'm able to get rid of these Stealth Rocks. So this thing actually ends up going for the Spirit Break there. I am able to live that nicely, and what I don't want here is for this thing to start setting up. I know that these things, if it's not Choice Scarf, it's going to potentially be uh, something like a, uh, a Swords Dance set. So I'm really hoping it's Choice Scarf. Unfortunately, it is going to reveal the Swords Dance there. So, while it's going to get a nice little plus two attack, I do get an Iron Head off, which is super effective, but it's not quite enough to take it out. Um, and so, basically, that doesn't get me really anywhere. I do get some chip on it to the point where now I'm confident that my Sarah Ledge can take it out. But the problem with that is, this thing is definitely faster, and now at plus two, this is going to outspeed and kill my double sword wielding homie. So, a Drain Punch is going to take me out here, and now i got to really figure out how I can possibly beat this thing. And the, uh, the answer is essentially getting rid of my Stealth Rock. So, 
As long as I have a Torkoal that can take a Drain Punch, I should be able to get the Rapid Spin off, which is then going to open up my Surledge to be able to uh, take an attack no matter what because of the Focus Sash. I essentially just need my Focus Sash to remain unbroken. And if I switch into Stealth Rock, I'm going to have a bad time. So, I bring in Sheldon. Now this thing, this dude's about as defensive as Titty. It's max HP, max defense, and I have a very good chance of being able to live an attack here to get a Rapid Spin off. Uh, but that Stealth Rock damage looks a little close, however it goes for the Drain Punch. Luckily, I do live it with 27, and thank god I trained this thing in max defense. So, being able to live that is now going to allow me to spin rapidly, gets rid of the Stealth Rock, and now that opens the door for Serledge to guarantee that I can at least take an attack from this thing. Um, so, I basically now just need to sack off the Turtle, and then try to get my swords in. So, I go for the Lava Plume here. Um, what is unfortunate, actually, he finishes me off with a Drain Punch, and is actually going to get this thing to the range where it's looking real close on whether or not Serledge is able to kill this thing with its Bitter Blade. It's gotten all the way back to nearly full HP, and I'm over here thinking there's no way this game gets turned around. Not like this. Uh, so I'm about to go ahead and snap, crackle, and pop some ass, and I'm figuring Bitter Blade should do like 85 to 90%, I'm hoping at least, but I'm guaranteed to take an attack because of that Focus Ash. Thank you, Turtle, for clearing the way. So... I'm also thinking that if Bitter Blade does not kill here, what I can do is then just basically click Shadow Sneak and ensure that this thing goes down. Actually, with the weak armor boost, I should actually be fast enough. So, Crackle is about to crackle some ass. He does go for the Shadow Sneak of his own there. Surprisingly, does not actually knock me to my Focus Sash, which is kind of crazy. Um, so, I actually, if, if coming in on the Stealth Rock would have actually put me in range for that to kill. Uh, however, I go for the Bitter Blade, and it is going to take care of the Iron Valiant. So... Cyborg ass Gallade Gardevoir thing is not going to be pulling off the sweep of the century today. And luckily, I actually get a nice little bit of health back there. Plus, Sireledge is in a pretty solid position here. I got that speed boost, and I'm also in the sun here. Now, this thing is also another scary ass Pokemon to deal with, and that is uh, the Great Tusk. So, it even gets the defense boost from the Protosynthesis, but I do actually have the Solar Blade. So, I know that's going to do likely around half. Uh, with that defense boost, depends on the kind of set that this thing is, but I basically just need a little bit of chip, it doesn't really matter, uh, because now the door is kind of looking open for our little walk and wake to come in and kind of finish what my dude started. So I go for the Bitter Blade there, works really well with the synergy of this team in the sun, and he does finish me off with an Earthquake. But, old Sword Hands did exactly what I needed it to do, and looked cool as hell in the process. So, now on the empty switch, I decide to go back into the walking wake, and uh, there is, this thing does not want to deal with this. We're a couple prehistoric looking dudes. And while ordinarily I could see us being homies, not today. So I do get that Protosynthesis. It is going to stick around for the remainder of the match. Benefits of running the Heat Rock on the Torkoal. But I don't care how bulky this Tusk is. There is no way it's living this, uh, this Hydro Steam. So that does take care of it. And now we are down to one more Pokemon. And I'll tell you what, for the first match of me bringing this Walking Wake, it has definitely been pretty impressive. Do not let this thing cook on you. It is... Very scary. So, uh, the last Pokemon turns out to be King Gambit. That's a little bit unfortunate, because I'm not going to be able to really get the uh, the five Pokemon sweep, as I know the Sucker Punch is likely coming. But I do have an answer for that in the back. All I essentially got to do is just kind of bait out the Sucker Punch. It does happen. Let this fellow with his skinny-ass arms go down. And now I just have to go into... Uh, I do have a Roaring Moon in the back. I, I'm running Choice Banded Roaring Moon, because I also get the benefit uh, of that Protosynthesis as well. And luckily, an Earthquake should be able to do it here. Even a Sucker Punch definitely is not going to be enough to even do, like, half to me. So I come in looking absolutely dapper. Get that little extra attack boost just for just for a nice little insurance here. And the Earthquake is going to be able to finish off the King Gambit. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the end of the match there. Super fun game. I had to hop in a little, uh, little Scarlet and Violet OU just to test out. Uh, the, the new dinosaur so and if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like it really does help out and i appreciate all the support on these videos i got plenty more where this one came from and if you somehow made it to the end comment tomato